Good evening, everyone. Thank you, ABP, for having a very timely discussion and debate on one of the most important subjects, because this is a subject which will affect 140 crores of our Indians, and this will affect the future of India and the image of India internationally. So thank you so much for having a very timely and an apt debate. Now, I've heard my friends Priyanka and Raghav speaking about how BJP can be defeated. I want to once again, again agree with them, reiterate that not BJP can be defeated, but BJP must be defeated. Why BJP must be defeated? Two things. Um, we had, as Indians, collectively given power to the current government, believing in them that what Congress could not do in so many years, BJP will come and do it, because BJP had promised multiple things. In the first time, 2014, when we gave them an opportunity, with 282 seats, they had promised for a lot of things, one being bringing back the black money, which only increased but never come back. One is two crore job every year, which nobody has seen. Three, a proper policies and development model, and stopping the rupee from falling, which has never happened. Well, Indians being Indians, all of us forgave. Mr. Modi, we said, chalo, paanch saal kya, aur paanch saal le lije. Lekin, kuch to badlao la ke dikai hai. From 282, we reinforced uh, Mr. Modi's strength, with BJP strength. We gave, gave them 303 seats in the next election. But in the next five years, again, unfortunately, people gave them 303, but all BJP gave us is three black laws which had ended up being responsible for 750 farmer, farmers dying in Singh border. They were anti-farmers, no jobs again, rupee value still falling, zero COVID management, and the list goes on and on. Now here the point is, if a government gets 10 years of chance and doesn't perform, should we not root them out? That is a fundamental question. Two, we are not asking for them to bring the moon down to the earth. We are just saying, if we can do Mangalyan, at the cheapest price in this world and be proud of it, why can't we give water to every household in this country? In Bombay, the financial capital of this country, we still get only two hours of water every single day in Bombay. Whichever friend I talk to, they tell us, do gante aata hai, we don't know kab aata hai. Like in Hyderabad, within seven to eight years, we managed to make sure we gave water to water 24 hours in every small village of Telangana. If it can happen in Telangana, the same model can be re replicated across the nation. And why isn't the current BJP government trying to do that? We're asking for basics, nothing else. Drinking water, irrigation water, jobs, that is all we are asking for. A new state like Telangana, if we can give away two and a half lakh government jobs in eight years, why is the central government sitting on 12 lakh vacancies in the government of India, not even giving a single notification. Forget about other notifications. In the premium institutes like IITs, IAMs, 28,000 jobs are vacant today, and the government doesn't want to fill up. But we want to become Vishwaguru. How are we going to become Vishwaguru without teaching our students what to do? So these are the fundamental questions. Drinking water, irrigation water, jobs. These are the only three things that we are asking. In these three things, Modi government has failed utterly, so we must root them out of power. And yes, the opposition stands united today. We have multiple times conducted various rallies from BRS party, where Amadmi party was present, where Shiv Sena was present, where various other parties like CPM, CPM were present. So uh, today, opposition stands united, and we would like to continue this unity, and we seek the support of the people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was a really powerful speech. The Prime Minister has said, and I think many people probably agree, that the BJP, whatever its faults, is different from many other political parties in India, which he says are, and I quote, family parties. And he says they're beset by corruption scandals. And what he's offering is an alternative to those family parties and to that corruption. I think you're probably one of the parties he has in mind. So how do you respond? First of all, as an extension to what Raghav and uh, Priyanka was saying, I would like to say, British government's policy was divide and rule. Today, BJP and Modi government's rule is raid and rule. So wherever you have to go, rule from the back doors, you raid, you divide that party, and you rule. 
That is the policy right now of the BJP government. Second, when Mr. Modi very clearly said, na khaunga, na kane dunga, parivar vaad, nepotism, corruption, what is he doing in the case of Mr. Adhani? Adhani ji, aapke extended parivar se hai, aapke dost hai, kya problem hai? Ek mahine ke piche, just in January 25th, to today February 25th, a company, Indian listed company, loses 12 lakh crores. LIC loses 80,000 crores. And Honorable Prime Minister is saying nothing. We ask for a joint parliamentary committee, we fight in the parliament, he says nothing. And if Mr. Modi is clean, he should at least now come out and say, put up a parliamentary committee. If you yourself are not clean, Mr. Modi, how are you even accusing the rest of the parties for being corrupt? That's a simple question. If you're not shielding Mr. Adani, why don't you just do the probe? They're doing a probe on me. They're doing a probe on 100 other people from the opposition parties. Why is Mr. Adani not being probed? Why is ED, SEBI, etc. not proactive in probing Mr. Adani? That is a simple question today. That in turn proves that Mr. Modi and BJP is not as clean as they say they are. That is precisely why we believe they will be voted out for this time. Two, and since this is a majorly women-dominated panel, I would like to request our, uh, my dear friend Poonam, that Poonam, it's been 10 years women reservation bill is pending. That was one of the poll promises in 2014 and also 2019 of Bharti Janta Party. Naren Modi ji has said, we will pass the women reservation bill. We have one more session to go. I honest, earnestly request Honorable Prime Minister and my very dear friend Poonam ji to get it passed so women political representation in all the houses will be more. Two, in, in, uh, from the time in 1830s when Indian census has started, not even during the world wars, World War I, World War II, census never stopped. But in Modi regime, from 2014 to 2022, no census of India. We don't know how many people are there in India now. My demand today is census should happen immediately and OBC census should definitely happen immediately. Otherwise, we cannot, we cannot rule this country. We cannot allocate funds in a proper manner. This is our sec second demand. So we can go on and on and on about what Mr. Modi has not done and why he should be doing it just by blaming the regional parties, saying you are from a parivar. My parivar, my entire parivar was on streets fighting for the state of Telangana. We came into politics, we came into people when we did not even have an idea that a state would be formed and then we will come to power, then you become MLA MP, no, nothing. We were just fighting on the streets, rubbing shoulder to shoulder with any common man in Telangana today and we automatically translated into a political party and we came into power. So all parivars are not same. All parivars, if Modi ji wants to say parivarvad, no. We are in a parivar where we are facing very clearly and very boldly the agencies. Why isn't your parivar member Mr. Adani facing the agencies? That is a simple question.